Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's update. I am pleased to provide an update following our first week of school. Overall, Superintendent Gallagher advises it was a great week, and it was so wonderful to have the students back. We are also confident that our staff and faculty have comfort in our established protocols and procedures in terms of health and safety. The students are doing a great job following the new protocols, wearing masks, learning to keep a distance, completing daily screenings, and attending to their hand hygiene. This reopening is unlike any other. At the Bresnahan, Molin, and Knox schools, we started with a hybrid model. Students grouped into two cohorts, attended school both remotely and in person. Newburyport High School began the year with grade-specific orientations and remote learning with their hybrid model starting on October 5th. We launched a fully remote program called the Remote Academy. Getting students back to the classroom is something we believe is critically important to our success and our children's successes going forward. State officials continue to monitor health metrics and if COVID-19 cases remain low locally in Newburyport and the surrounding communities, then we could transition an additional 25% of the students into a third in-person learning day as early as November 2nd. I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who has contributed to our school's opening. In a community-wide effort, staff, students, and families have cleared many hurdles for our youth to continue their education, and it is very much appreciated. Our city continues its commitment to the well-being of our retail, restaurants, and small businesses within Newburyport during this economic crisis from the ongoing COVID-19 public health emergency. Last week, the state extended the outdoor dining season, and just this week, it announced that restaurants can expand seating of up to 10 people per table and utilize bar seating. This is great news for our city. The new regulations apply to both indoor and outdoor seatings. Tables still must be socially distanced at least six feet. This will help restaurants use their space more effectively and to be able to utilize bar seating for regular food service with appropriate distances in place. However, bars and nightclubs will remain closed. We also hope these changes will trickle down to help other small businesses and main street shops that neighbor our restaurants. This certainly applies to our downtown district. Newburyport restaurants utilizing our public sidewalks, parking lanes and lots, and other city property may continue to operate outside, weather permitting until December 1st. Permits and application fees of any nature will continue to be waived, including the use of he heaters. However, restaurant owners still need to obtain a permit from the fire department. We've had an open call for the last few weeks for those interested in membership with our new Newburyport Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Alliance, or in short, the DEI Alliance. Please note, the deadline to apply is tomorrow, Friday, September 25th. The Alliance will focus on racial equity issues in our community. It will be a collaborative effort and will be focused on developing measurable and obtainable goals for a sustainable community plan on racial justice. The Alliance will carry out a thorough review of city policies, services, and ordinances, as well as inequities in community systems. The group will also report out clear recommendations, including ways in which success will be measured. The Alliance will play a pivotal role in this process. To be considered for the Newburyport DEI Alliance, applicants must submit a resume and a cover letter indicating why you would like to serve on the Alliance, what background, experience, or expertise you bring, and what do you hope the Alliance will achieve. In addition, 
applicants must be able to commit to a minimum of 10 hours a month of time dedicated to DEI's work. The goal is to assemble as broad and as inclusive an alliance as possible in terms of diversity. It is anticipated that local political, religious, business, and community advocates will be representative. Emphasis will be placed on choosing members that represent a diversity of stakeholders based on age, gender, race, sexual orientation, religion, and income. Interested individuals should submit their applications by email to mayor at cityofnewburyport.com and include the subject heading DEI application. Again, the deadline to apply is tomorrow, September 25th. With the recent algae bloom on the upper and lower artichoke reservoirs, Ha they have been successfully treated and eradicated. The water restrictions remain in place, though, due to the drought conditions the entire state is experiencing. Outdoor watering will be allowed from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., following an odd-even day schedule based on the resident's home address. This means that homes with odd number addresses will be able to conduct outdoor watering on days that end with odd numbers, and those with even numbered addresses will be able to conduct outdoor watering on days with even numbers. These restrictions are necessary to ensure ample water supply for our entire community. The water restriction will remain in place until further notice. Thank you for your cooperation. Preparations are underway for our next election on November 3rd. As most of you know, due to COVID-19, all registered voters in Massachusetts may vote by mail. No excuse required. You must return the vote by mail ballot application four business days before the election or October 28th. However, we strongly encourage people return your application as soon as possible to ensure you receive a mail-in ballot. In addition to mailing your ballot, another option for completed ballots is to hand deliver and place your ballot in the secure mail drop located on the front steps of City Hall at 60 Pleasant Street. Early voting for the state election will be held at the Senior Center on 331 High Street starting Saturday, October 17th, and will end on Friday, October 30th, 2020. Please go to the cityofnewburyport.com forward slash city clerk, then click the election news for links and hours. Face coverings are required at the center and social distancing guidelines will be in place. On Tuesday, November 3rd, voting will occur from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at your usual ward polling place. This is also a good time to remind everyone to fill out the census for 2020. The census provides a snapshot of our community, who we are, where we live, and so much more. The results help communities make critical decisions around schools, clinics, roads, and services for families, older adults, and children, just to name a few. The 2020 Census is happening now. You can complete your questionnaire online, by phone, or by mail. Go to 2020census.gov for instructions on how to complete it. And please know, the U.S. Census Bureau is bound by law to protect your answers and to keep them strictly confidential. This Saturday, from 10 to 2, our Public Health Department is holding a free community drive through flu clinic. It will be held at the Senior Community Center at 333 High Street. Pre-registration is required by calling 978 465 4410. Plan to wear a face covering, a short sleeve shirt, and please remain in your car. 
we encourage all to attend. The cities of Newburyport and Amesbury will be holding a household hazardous waste day this Saturday, September 26th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. It will be held at the Department of Public Services, 16A Perry Way, Newburyport, off Low Street, and will be held rain or shine. This drop-off event allows residents to dispose of hazardous materials in an environmentally responsible manner. In order to attend the event, you must sign up online and choose the time period most convenient for you. For Newburyport residents and additional information on accepted materials for disposal and how to sign up, please see the city's website, cityofnewburyport.com, or call 978-465-4410 and press 1. Please note we have had a great response to this event and want to accommodate everyone, so it's important that you sign up. Though it's only the end of September, we recognize that many are thinking about Halloween. The CDC has just released new guidelines on their website and ranks all activities associated with Halloween at a risk level. The list also offers ideas on how to adapt some of the activities to limit the risk and hopefully avoid COVID-19. We have not made a decision at the local level on door-to-door -door trick or treating in Newburyport, and we are working with our neighboring towns of Amesbury and Salisbury, along with the CDC and state guidelines to try and find a happy medium and resolve this. We hope to plan on continuing with this tradition in a way that is safe for all with minimal risk. We will have more to share on Halloween activities in the next week or so, and so we appreciate your patience. Lastly, we need to applaud all of us on our work to mitigate this coronavirus, which has allowed us to reopen our communities and our economies. COVID is still very much with us, until there is a medical breakthrough like a vaccine. And we must continue to do all we can to work together and to keep our community safe. Thank you and have a great weekend.